all so much for joining on our, our Thursday program. And uh, we are very honored and blessed today to have His Holiness Jai Jodha Swami Maharaj among with us. So, Hari Hari. So, for uh, those of you who don't know uh, Maharaj, uh, Maharaj is the uh, direct disciple of Srila Prabhupada and uh, one of the very few people who uh, in very early disciples of Srila Prabhupada and uh, have been serving ISKCON and uh, the society by a um, lot of his uh, book editing work as well as uh, he has authored many books and uh, one of his uh, really famous books is uh, Vanity Karma and uh, yes so Maharaj is with us for uh, next few more days so today today and uh, even Saturday and Sun Maharaj will be giving his uh, association. So, and today's uh, discussion is uh, basically Q&A session. If you have any questions, any questions, burning questions or non-burning questions, uh, Maharaj would be very happy to answer those. Um, so, you know, I would encourage everyone to open up and ask as many questions as possible. So, to, uh, Thank you very much. Om Ajnana Timiran Tasya Gyananjana Shalakaya Chakshurin Militam Jaina Tasmai Shri Gurave Nama Shri Chaitanya Mano Bistam Stapitam Jaina Bhutale Swayam Rupa Kada Mayam Dathati Shapatartikam Sunday Hang Shri Guru Shri Jatapata Kamanam Shri Gurun Vaishnavamsha Shri Rupam Shagrajatam Shahagana Raganatan Vitamstam Sajiva Sadvaitam Savatutam Parijana Sahitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam Sri Radha Krishna Padan Sahagana Lalita Sri Vishakhan Vitamstra He Krishna Karuna Sindho Deen Vandho Jagatpate Gopesha Gopika Kanta Radha Kanta Namostite Tapta Kanshana Gaurangi Radhe Vrindavaneshwari Vrishabh Hanu Sute Devi Pranamami Bodhi Kriye Vanshako Patarubhyascha Kupa Sindho Bhyevacha Padita Nam Pavanebhyo Vaishnavebhyo Namo Nama Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadha Shri Vas Adi Gaur Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Well, thank you all very much for coming, those of you who are here and those who are online. Uh, as mentioned, pretty much anything goes. Any questions that you might have, feel uh, welcome to ask. And is, is our audio okay? You can hear all right? Okay. Masks are really great for steaming up your glasses. <laughs> okay. And uh, I wonder what sort of questions we might have bubbling up. Yes. So, how seriously we should take our material life, for example, you know, you can take it to the financial situation. How, How seriously should we take our material life? For example, our health, our financial situation. How much should we depend on Krishna and how much we should use our material intelligence? How much should we depend on Krishna? How much should we use our material intelligence? Yes. Well, we should take our life, the basics of our life, seriously. And as Srila Prabhupada said, do the needful. 
it's not that, well, Krishna's the Supreme Personality of Godhead, so I don't need to eat anymore. I'll just depend on Krishna. Uh, it's just neglect everything. Maybe the Paramahansas can do that. Those who are on the highest level, they'll just leave everything to Krishna, and they won't worry about they won't even give attention to eating, they won't give, but we can't imitate. So we should do everything carefully, responsibly, with the idea that I'm doing this for Krishna's service. Uh, if you're going to maintain yourself financially and um, physically for sense gratification, better to die. Just to spend, waste your life on, on sense gratification. It is a useless waste of, of your human life. But to use your, your life for Krishna consciousness is the real purpose. And for that end, you want to do everything attentively. So you see to your finances, you see to your health, you see to eating, you see to having a suitable place to live. Uh, that's good. But you don't want to, what is that in the in Bhagavatam? Jivasya tattva jigyasa narto yas jeha karmabhi. Kamasya nindriya priti. Kamasya nindriya priti. Labhu jiveta Human life is not meant for uh, just increasing our desires and struggling to satisfy them. Uh, indriya priti, to simply pursuing what's pleasing to my senses. That's what the animals do. They're busy uh, trying to satisfy their senses. So they do it crudely, we do it with sophistication. It's the same business. So Shukadeva Goswami says, that's not the business of human life. Jivasya tattva jigyasa. Human life is meant for inquiring about spiritual realization. That's what the animals can't do. They could do all the other stuff, but they can't ask. You know, they don't come here to find out about the science of Krishna. So that's the business of the human life. Jivasya tattva jigyasa narto yasche hakarmabhi. So lavo jiveta yavata. Shukadev Goswami says, as much as you need to keep body and soul together. Not that I, I build a big mansion for myself and say, well, the, the top luxury car and the most recent iPhone 200 and, you know, the, you don't, we, I don't need that. So what I need, let me do very properly. Um, and then be done with it and get on with the real business. Just like we, we came in a car, so... The car has to have fuel, the car has to, the brakes have to work, the steering wheel has to work. But not that we obsess over the car. The point is to get here. So if we just spend our whole time, car, 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 and we don't, don't arrive, then we wasted our time. So the body is uh, yantra, it's a car. In the Bhagavad Gita, yantra rudhani mara. So we should see that the car is properly maintained but not lose sight of the purpose, to get to the destination. Jivasya tattva jigasa, to understand the science of Krishna. Is that okay? So we're chasing away a bug, that's not really a hand. <laughs> <laughs> Maharaj, I was reading the Shrimad Bhagavatam, second canto. Hmm. Second canto, second verse, verse two and, sorry, second chapter. Verse 18 says that, the impersonal Brahma Jyoti is also called the Param Param. It's also called Param Padam. Yeah. Impersonal Brahma Jyoti is also called Param Padam. So it is Param Padam. And Prabhupada says the, the living entities who are in Brahma Jyoti also can fall down. Hmm. So how do you understand that if it is the race that's coming from the spiritual world, so then whoever reaches the spiritual world, they will not fall down. That's also the hmm. Then how do we explain how the living entities fall from this param padam? Huh? So first of all, we have to know what is param padam. What does it mean? Padam means place, and param means the highest. 
So the Brahma Jyoti is also put on Padam, and Brahma Jyoti. Brahma Jyoti means the effulgence of the spiritual, or that fills the spiritual world. Uh, it's identified with the impersonal feature of Lord Krishna. So, Brahmeti Paramatmeti Bhagavaniti Shadjita. In the Bhagavatam, it said that there's only one absolute truth, uh, known in three features as the impersonal Brahma, the localized Paramatma, and Bhagavan, the personality of Godhead. So, since the absolute truth is one, the Parampadam is one, the supreme destination is one. But because the absolute truth has different aspects, the Parampadam has different aspects. The Brahma aspect, and finally the Golo Vrindavan aspect, or the Vaikuntha aspect, the, the spiritual uh, planets. Hmm? So, when in the Bhagavad Gita, when Krishna says, he's speaking specifically about uh, Madhama. Madhama, his own abode, the place where he lives. So his living place is, is, on the, is on the spiritual planets. And filling the, that atmosphere is the uh, Brahma Jyoti, the, the spiritual effulgence. So the spiritual planets are the real residence for the living entities. And the Brahma Jyoti, you can live in, you can live in, but you can't stay. It's difficult to stay there because it's not our, our natural position. In the Brahma Jyoti, there's no service. There's no personal identity. There's no personality of Godhead manifest. And therefore, it's not attractive ultimately to the living entity. It doesn't provide the the full life that, that every living entity is looking for. Therefore, Rujakrit's train of Param Padam Pataha, even after attaining that Param Padam after great difficulty, Patantyadva, uh, one can still fall down. Why? Anadrita Yushmarangreya. Because of neglecting the lotus feet of the personality of Godhead. So it is basically by choice the living entity will come down again because they are not satisfied in the... <laughs> by choice or by, you know, Prabhupada gives the example that you, we send these space probes up into uh, outer space and either two things are going to happen. Um, it's going to, uh, well, it can, those space probes can float around, but if they, they'll, they, 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 they come in touch with the gravity of some planet, and then they land there. Uh, either they fall back down to Earth, or they're attracted by some planet, but it's difficult for them to, to float on and on and on and on. So the, uh, or even the, we can live, for example, in, in the water for some time, but not very long. Finally, we go looking for the shore because we're creatures of the shore, not creatures of the water. So as living beings, we're meant to have a personal identity, personal activities, personal relationship with Krishna. So not finding that, we'll just fall down again. We'll just fall down again. Nothing to hold on to. Okay. Like those space probes that you know never, never reach the moon or never reach a planet, they fall down. Oh, let's see. Yes, is there another question? Yes, you're welcome. Yeah. Um, see, based on one's karma, mm. living entities go through different uh, sufferings or they enjoy the fruits of their actions. Yeah. Based on their karma, living entities suffer and enjoy the results of their actions. And where is the jurisdiction of Yamaraj comes into picture? Because Yamaraj is also where does Yamaraj's jurisdiction come? His jurisdiction comes for the sinful living entities, for the sinful human beings. 
but they take virtual and uh, virtually planets to suffer their sinful reactions anyway, right? So mm -hmm. the, the living entities who are sinful, mm -hmm. they will be born on this earthly planet to suffer, meaning mm -hmm. they may have... Well, first of all, every living entity is sinful. Every living entity in the material world is sinful. Otherwise, without being sinful, we wouldn't be here. Just in the prison, everyone's a criminal. Then it's just a question of how, how serious a criminal he is, but everyone's criminal. So we're all sinful because we've turned away from Krishna. That itself is you know, sinful or uh, a misuse of our consciousness, you can say. So we're all misusing our spiritual consciousness to turn toward matter. And therefore, we're all suffering. Therefore, we're all suffering. Now, the living entities in the lower species of life, they don't go to Yamaraj. Because they never violate the rules for their species. You never see a tiger stealing oranges. <laughs> hmm? They always do exactly what they're supposed to do. So, n nothing wrong there. When you come to the human life, there are two ways to act, piously or sinfully. Piously means following the rules of uh, nature or the laws of God. And sinfully means violating, transgressing, trying, overly trying to exploit the resources of the material nature and thereby uh, violating the laws. You know, like there's, uh, you can go into the bank and do your ATM transactions and conduct your business, or you can try to break into the safe and get more. If you do that, you're a criminal. Hmm? And if you just do your ATM transaction, well, so Yamaraj is in charge of, of course, we're all criminals, but you know, those who are the severe criminals who are breaking even the laws of this world, they go, they go to Yamaraj, the human beings who misuse their, uh, who violate the laws of nature grievously. They go to Yamaraj. Otherwise, the other living beings, the other living beings and lower species, they don't go. And the human beings who don't violate grievously nature's laws, they don't go. Yes? How do you understand that a law is being violated? Because in the Bhagavad Gita, Arjuna is fighting and killing his family, but mm. it's pious. It's pious. Uh, how do we understand that a law is being violated? Because in Bhagavad Gita, Arjuna is killing his relatives, and it's pious. Therefore, it said, uh, dharmam hi shakshad bhagavat pranitam. The dharma, or, or law, is what's enunciated by the personality of Godhead, Bhagavan. So, where did, how does that happen? Well, in Kurukshetra, Bhagavan is right there next to Arjuna, and he's telling him what to do. So, there's no question of Arjuna doing anything uh, so sinful. Closer, so, the closer you are to Krishna, the more you have an understanding you have of his laws. Yes, if you're directed personally by Krishna, or by Krishna's representative, the bona fide spiritual master, then you're acting uh, perfect, perfectly uh, under Krishna's perfect direction. The Shastra, the Vedic literature, also represents Krishna. If we don't have a guide around, is our internal Krishna consciousness our guide? That means, of course, if we've connected with a, a proper guide, proper spiritual master, then the connection is eternal. He may be physically present, physically not present, but he's always with us as long as we remember the instructions. We haven't yet come to that stage. We haven't met a, a guide that we can uh, you know, turn to. Then is our something from within. Is that, uh, it's unreliable because my heart tells me something. Now, is that God telling me, or is that my, my whims, or my, my desires, or my illusions telling me? You know, people have, there was some serial murder case in, in America some years ago where uh, some madman was, was killing people, and he was getting, like, messages from his dog. <laughs> you know, I should do this. So people get, from within, they get all sorts of, you know, I, I, should, uh, I should chase after my 
my best friend's wife because, uh, you know, I'm getting that feeling from within. <laughs> yeah, it's, <laughs> that's not Krishna's direction. So um, there are three sources of knowledge about what to do. The, uh, uh, of course, there's Krishna himself in person, as Arjun had him. Otherwise, the guru, the bona fide spiritual master, and the sadhus, the saintly devotees who are following the principles of Krishna consciousness, and the shastra, the, the Vedic literature, uh, which from Krishna. So the, the Vedic literature, shastra pramanam, Krishna says, uh, we should take, take the guide. But then, therefore, even Krishna is quoting shastra to Arjuna. He's quoting Vedic literature, uh, Brahma Sutra, Padaisa, you know, different ways. Uh, but I lost my thought for a second. Uh, so, in following Shastra, we should be guided by the bona fide spiritual master. Can you see if there's another good mask in here? This one's really. Uh, mask, mask, mask. Mask. No, I have this one, but see if there's one in here that's better than the one I'm using. Funky. Um, yes. Uh, th those are the same as what I've got. You can just take a look and see. Um, otherwise, we're only here for an hour and, and uh, I'll make it. You don't see one. Okay, there's 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 another section to that that bag, not just the yeah. Uh, let's see what we've got. Oh, that one is primo. Thank you very much. You're scheduled for an upgrade. Okay, this should be better. It'll still fog my glasses, but you can't have everything. Thank you very much. Well, now, the chat box is busy. And if you could look in, back in there, you'll find another glasses case, which has my reading glasses. This is quite far away. And I think that's in the main section. Yes, thank you. Prabhin says, okay, so he's 6329 provides uh, further documentation of who, go, who comes to Yamaraj. Srimad Bhagavatam 6329. Thank you, Supervene, for that. Now, the living entity, Murari Gupta says, suffers for his sinful activities in the hellish planets, but there's a mass of suffering on this planet also. Where is that from? Well, it's from us. <laughs> In two ways, uh, we bring suffering on ourselves by coming to this material world. That's the first thing. Reading glasses make everybody here look weird. So. <laughs> Just by turning away from the material, from Krishna, we, we put ourselves in suffering. When we step away from our, our natural position, we're stepping into a position where we're going to suffer. Uh, so that's the first thing. We bring suffering upon ourselves. And then we work conjointly to cause suffering to one another. So in that way, we suffer. You know, what is this environmental crisis? It's all sorts of human beings for everybody else, for, for the other human beings and for the, the other species of life. Uh, the, if the 
reports are correct that the coronavirus is of human manufacture, then that's another instance of human being causing problems for other human beings. Apart from that, there's the usual more prosaic ways of causing problems. You know, we, we get one another in traffic accidents, we divorce one another, well, we don't divorce one another. Either way, we cause trouble for, <laughs> for, for one another. So this is one of three kinds of, of miseries inherent in, in this world, from other living entities, from the environment, from nature, and from our own bodies and minds. So that, uh, from, the, from the modes of material nature, the workings of the modes of material nature, there will be uh, trouble, especially from the mode of passion. Rajasastu pamam dukkha. Passion, the more we increase suffering for ourselves and for others. We think that passion is great. In Kali Yuga, passion is considered to be outstanding because so many people are dull here in ignorance. So passion, they make passion look good. But the real standard of, of human life is, is goodness. The calm, peaceful, thoughtful uh, mode, uh, not the mode of, I want more, achieve more, do more, get more, enjoy more, control more. That brings suffering. And of course, even goodness perfect. It also brings suffering in its own subtle ways. Um, it binds us to a feeling, you know, I'm doing well, I'm, uh, I'm reading interesting books, I'm thinking about important things, I have a peaceful, natural way of life, and so let me come back again to this material world and live this way as a scientist, as a philosopher, as a uh, what, have, what have you, the poet. So, uh, therefore, Krishna says, mistrangling of Bhagavan, one should get free from all the three modes of nature. That's the only way to put an end to all suffering. As living entities are initially in touch with Krishna as his servant, why does fall down happen for a jiva, a living being? And can't it happen again after going back to Goloka Vrindavan? Or is this just beyond under the understanding of a conditioned soul? Well, Srila Prabhupada explains this in various ways. First of all, that we have eternal independence. And eternal independence means an eternal ability to misuse that independence. So that's the the, the why, why fall down happens. It happens because we want to be independent. And Krishna says, Yadgatva Nanivartante, if you come back, you won't fall. You won't fall. So <laughs> then it finally becomes beyond our ability to understand because no one can understand. When we first became conditioned, therefore we're called the Nitya Bhadha, eternally conditioned souls. So, uh, therefore, Srila Prabhupada advised us to avoid, uh, what's the word, beating our brains to try to figure out uh, how we got here, when we got here, and just uh, go back. You know, you're in the water, and someone extends you a rope, and you say, well, wait a second, how did I get here? <laughs> you know, grab the rope, and we'll talk about that later. Yes. Uh, I'm just wondering that um, you always talk about that everyone has to be Krishna conscious. Everyone has to be Krishna conscious. Krishna conscious. That is uh, one of our duties. Also. That's our duties. Not one of our duties. That's our duty. Yes. <laughs> if everyone becomes Krishna conscious and leaves this planet forever, that goes to Krishna's world. If everyone so leaves this planet and goes to Krishna's planet. Consciousness, and the, because you want to be free from your then wouldn't Krishna's own creation be in problems? Yes, because it has to be balanced. Always some, some people believe they are going to be entangled. His creation will be in problems. Well, you just contradicted yourself. 
you said there'd always be someone back here, but and then you said, well, what if everyone left? I think Krishna does not want his creation to be in problem. The creation. The, well, let's look at it in two ways. First of all, there's not much danger that everybody's going to go back to Godhead. <laughs> You know, there's, there's, as you say, always some who want to stick around and, you know, not miss the next act. There's always some, some always some fools who say, no, why should I go? <laughs> That's the first thing. Yeah. They don't. Not that they don't suffer. They're not sinful. It's not that they don't suffer. You know, you see animals tearing other animals apart. Somebody is definitely suffering there. But they don't, su they don't have to go to Yamaraj and be punished for violating their duties because they perform their duties. But as animals, they suffer, sure. Not that uh, this is great, you know, I'll escape from suffering by entering animal life. No, the animals suffer also. The, so that's the first thing. And the second thing is, well, if everybody left, wouldn't this, this world fall apart? You know, this is the prison. If everybody, you know, was released from prison, everybody earned uh, freedom from prison, well, that's not a problem for the government. What are we going to do? Everybody's left. So. <laughs> but there's always some who insist, you know, let me rob the bank, let me... Let me go to prison. Okay, let's see. Um, Lakshmi Moni has her hand up. Okay. Um, and I don't see her, but, but she has her hand up. So she, wherever you are, Lakshmi Moni. Oh, there you are. Hare Krishna. Yes. Hold on a second. It sounds like my volume is way down. I've heard billions of times before that, you know, there's three ways of knowing what to do. There's Guru, Shastra, and Sadhu. And, of course, the spiritual master. And, you know, you have advisors. Um, and then you have your own good, hopefully good, uh, understanding of what's right and wrong, and what should be done and what should not be done. Um, but sometimes it seems that those things are in conflict with each other. And it's almost simplistic to say that it's always going to be clear what should be done. Mm. I mean, we, I'm sure you've heard, we've heard it before, that Arjuna was sitting on the chariot with Krishna. So he didn't, you know, there was no lack of clarity who was going to give him the advice of what to do. But he was confused for 18 chapters, and, um, or 17 chapters, and um, it seems like there's a lot of confusion in, in the part of many as to what is the best course of action to move forward. Mm -hmm. And there's so many influences from what we know is not desirable. For instance, we've talked about Facebook, and we've talked about you know, other things that influence us, and we know it's not good but it still influences us and collectively it influences us. And so doing the right thing sometimes becomes very difficult or maybe impossible. I don't know. That's my question is how do you know really uh, how to move forward? Sometimes it seems like it's almost impossible to know. How do we know which way to move forward? Sometimes seems impossible. There's, there's guru, there's sadhu, there's shastra, but it seems that there may be, they may not always say the same thing. And Arjun was, even Arjun was confused for 17 chapters or so. So how do we get things straight? And then there's so many other influences um, in the form of Facebook and, and so on. We've talked about that before. So how do we know what's right? Well, the first thing is uh, we know that we can, without loss to our spiritual welfare or integrity, log off Facebook. Uh, Guru, Sadhu, Shastra, but not Facebook. <laughs> if everyone would follow that sage-like advice, it would make life a lot easier. Life would be a lot easier, yes. Uh, life has not improved thanks to Facebook, sorry to say. 
um, we use it, but we use it at our peril. It's, it's not designed for the welfare of, human, of, of humanity. When the board of directors or the, the stockholders of whoever owns Facebook meet, they don't, their first question isn't, what will be best for the welfare of humanity? Nor is any other first, second, third, fourth, fifth question. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's unlikely to be discussed at all. So uh, we don't need, so we can set that aside to begin with. Uh, but we have three, so we have three sources of knowledge, Sadhguru and Shastra, what to do um, when they don't seem to be in agreement. And then we have our own intelligence, which, with which we have to try to sort things out, or, you know, finally we have to be the ones to, to accept what advice is going to be. So how do we, how do we reconcile these things? Um, yeah, sometimes, most of the time, we hope, things are fairly clear. You know, we don't have to ask, is illicit sex okay or not okay? Is gambling okay or not okay? Meat eating, uh, intoxicants. We don't have to, you know, these are not like gray areas or, or difficult points. And so many other things are very clear from Shastra um, or from the spiritual master's order. It's this, it's this, it's this, it's this. So this, this guides our life. Uh, but then you come to points that are more subtle, they may be less important, or sometimes they may be important. Uh, some crucial question where we can't quite make out, what, what am I supposed to do? Uh, so the, of course, the Prabhupada said the main direction is Shastra. Krishna's direction is there in Shastra and relative or presenting the Shastra as the spiritual master. And the sadhus or the devotees, they also are working from, from Shastra. Uh, just as in the law court, the judge, the prosecuting attorney, the defense, the, the uh, prosecution, they're all working from the law. So the law books are the, the point of reference. The judge refers to the law, the attorneys on both sides refer to the law. So the law is, is finally, so Shastra, the, the book of law, or the, the book that's, uh, yes, meant to direct us. So then, uh, the Shastra, ideally we understand from the bona fide spiritual master. My spiritual master has told me to do this. Fine, and, end of story. Should I do this or should I do that? On the one side this, on the one side that, on the other side that, and then on the third side and the fourth side, and, you know, like the, we're like thousand, we, we suddenly manifest a thousand hands. Well, on one side, and then on, another, on one hand, on the other hand, and then on the third hand. Uh, so this, the spiritual master is there. You do this. Question solved. Guru Mukha Padma Bhakya Jate Te Kuriyai. My spiritual master has answered my question. Now I just have to do it. I don't have to, to keep guessing. Spiritual master may not be physically present, uh, then, or if it, it doesn't seem he's given an instruction on some particular point, what do we do? So then the Shastra is there, the books are there, and the devotees are there. So we saw that Srila Prabhupada even would consult. He would consult. Even if the sadhus were his own disciples, still he would consult. Tamal Krishna, Maharaj, what do you think? Uh, Guru Kripa, what do you think? This one, what do you think? What do you think? He would also take consideration. So we have to do that. Uh, my own intelligence, that's all right. But then there are sadhus, they may be more thoughtful. They may, uh, or they may expose the matter, different sides of the matter, different consideration. Even Krishna, he's sitting in Dwarka Uddhava, what do you think? He would take advice from the assembly members, and especially Uddhava was the most intimate with, with Krishna. So in this way we try to understand uh, carefully, not that, well, I know what to do uh, when I don't. We can take advice and, and thoughtful 
what is that thoughtful discussion among the devotees to try to understand what is the best way way to do. And at the same time, we pray to Krishna. We depend on Krishna. Please give us direction, instruction. But it's it's not just pray and go. It's it's, it's in reference to shastra, sadhu, guru. Is that okay? Yeah, I guess it's okay. Uh, it qualifies okay. In theory, it's okay. In theory, yeah, it gets, it can get dicey. Not every decision is easy, uh, and even not every decision is right. Sometimes we make the wrong decision, and then we do, you know, that we're implicated. Right, I did something wrong. But even if the devotee does something wrong. Because he's a devotee, Krishna helps him. He, he comes back to the right path. A BJ Sudharacharo, even if he does something very wrong. Durachar means wrong action. Sudharachar means uh, immensely wrong action. Uh, but Bhajate and Mahamananyavak, if he sticks firmly to the determination to serve Krishna, Sadhureva Samantati, he has to be considered a sadhu. And Chipram Bhavati Dharma, he comes quickly back to the right right path. Yes? If everything else has failed. If everything else has failed. Can you just chant the name of Krishna? Can you just chant the name of Krishna? Absolutely. Even if everything else has not failed. Right. Until you get an answer. Will you get it? You may very well. Because Krishna and his name are, are not different. So if you're chanting Hare Krishna, you're coming in touch with Krishna. Of course, those who are pure devotees, when they chant Hare Krishna, they get a clear, what would you say, they fully appreciate the presence of Krishna. Those of us who are beginners, we appreciate to a greater or lesser extent. But yes, you're exactly right. That when I'm in, in, in perplexity, let me just chant Hare Krishna. And then, was, then I have experience of that from my earliest days in Krishna Talk. You just chant Hare Krishna and your perplexity is gone. Krishna solves the problem for you or you're, you realize that it wasn't a problem. Only in your mind was it a problem. So it's, if we're always chanting Hare Krishna, practically speaking, we'll never be in difficulty. And even if we're in difficulty, Krishna will help us. Kirtaniya Sadahari. Excellent solution. Thank you so much. You're right on target. Yes. Maharaj, this is a question about um, some verses in the Bhagavatam. There's innumerable examples, innumerable so forth that Prabhupada has written about what are the qualities that please Krishna. The qualities that please Krishna. And, and specifically, I'm really, uh, thinking about a verse uh, right after Dhruva Maharaj uh, tries to decimate the Yakshas and he gets mm. advice. And, and there's a verse about Kitabira. That's a good example, by the way. The true Maharaj thought that he should kill the Yakshas to, because they killed his brother. But then he got advice from his spiritual master, senior devotee, so then he came back to the right standard. Yes, go ahead. So that's just one of many examples throughout the Bhagavatam about what should a devotee do. The mm. knowledge is that. But the more I, I read, I'm, I'm more painfully aware about the chasm between where I want to be, or where scripture wants us to be, and where, where we are. Am. So how does one go about this without being discouraged? We're directed by scripture, but so we, we know what we're supposed to do, but then we become aware of the, the distance between where we are and where we're supposed to be. So how do we go on without being discouraged? Step by step. The Pupa Goswami uh, you know, Atyahara, not Atyahara, um, Utsaha, Nishaya, Dharya. Well, we carry on with enthusiasm and with confidence that because I'm following the, the right process, certainly I'll, I'll reach the goal. And Dharya, with patience and determination, Tat Tat Karma Pavartana, performing, following the rules and regulations, doing the things, doing the routine work, it's probably sometimes that. Uh, Sangha Tyaga, giving up bad associations so that I'm not 
pulled off course by that um, bad company, and Satovrite, uh, to be honest in our occupation or to associate with devotees. Shadir, Bhaktir, Prasidhyati, then we'll reach perfection. Mm -hmm. There's a question, there's something more on the chat box, let's see what's happening. Dave says in Bhagavatam, no one is dear to the Supreme Personality of Godhead, nor is anyone his enemy or friend. Uh, but he gives inspiration to those who have not forgotten him and destroys those who have. But then in chapter 12, Bhagavad Gita, Krishna says, lists several types of people who are very dear to him. How should these two different statements be understood? In Bhagavad Gita also, Krishna says, Samoham Sarvabhuteshu, I'm, I'm equal to all. Nam ne dveshyosti na priha. I'm not anyone's enemy, I'm not anyone's friend. Ye bhajanti tu, maam bhaktya. But if someone engages in my devotional service, uh, someone serves me in, in devotion, mayite teshu chakri. I'm in him and he's in me. Uh, the sun is equal to everyone. But if you close your doors, close your windows, then no sun. And if you go out on the beach and uh, bathe in the sunshine, you get the cold. So it's not that the sun is friendly to the beachgoers and, and hates the people who stay inside. It's up to them. You, you can stay inside or you can go to the beach. Stay inside, you'll get no sunlight. You'll have vitamin D3 deficiency and all of that. And you go out into the sun, you'll get all the benefit of the sun's rays. So it's not because the sun is partial, but it's up to us. Krishna says, uh, yeah. Everyone else, you might want to check your phone and see that it's in, in silent mode. Um, is silent mode near up here? Uh, yeah, so I think that answers that question. Um, just hold on one second. Uh, yes, your question. So there are many rules and regulations in Shastra, like, and uh, like there are things like we should not do with left hand, right hand, Vastu Shastra, mm. there is about... Uh, no, you should remain at home if somebody dies, and so many. There are very, very instructions in the Shastra about so many things. So, how much are we supposed to take those instructions? There are so many instructions in the Shastra, Vastu Shastra, and this Shastra and that Shastra. Do this with your, don't do this with your left hand. Don't do this with this way. Uh, then, don't go out at this time. And then, as Brahmanas, uh, one who is a Brahmana is not supposed to work in a as a salary for some Brahman is not to work to work as a salaried person. So how do we what do we do with this whole universe full of instructions? Yes, and then we are initiated as Brahmanas, but then we are working at a job. And we're initiated as Brahmins, but we're working outside. So what to do? Okay. So first thing is what is that? Uh Shruti of Vibhinna. Uh, there's so many different Shruta There's so many different instructions from Shastra. Right. So, uh, what should one do? Mahajanayena So, Mahajan means especially what the spiritual master has ordered. That's also there in Bhagavatam. Buri uh, Burini Karmani Shotavyani Vibhagusha Tasahotra Yatsava. Samudritya uh, Manishaya. The sages said to Sutta Goswami, my dear Sutta Goswami, there's so many shastras with so many directions. Bhuri, bhurini karmani, shrotavyani, vibhagasha. 
so many ways of looking at things, so many different shastras, so many different directions. Atta, therefore, sarvotra yat sarvam, samudritya minishya. Please uh, make it easy for us and select the essence of those instructions. Select the essence of those instructions because to follow every rule and regulation is not possible. Um, and it's not the point. Srila uh, Prabhupada didn't start an international society for following all the rules and regulations. But he selected those that would be important for us. So therefore, it's, it, we're meant to be directed by the spiritual master. I know my god brother Pradumna, he had a, uh, an almanac, Vedic almanac, with full of directions, you know, that between four and six on, on this day, it's inauspicious to go east. Before, between two and three, it's inauspicious to go north, to start a new venture in the morning on this day will result in... Shri Prabhupada said, if you go by that, you can't do anything. <laughs> so we have to go by the spiritual master's instructions. He selects the essence. As far as, yes, as far as Varnashram goes, uh, and anyone who's taking a salary can't claim to be a Brahmin. Brahmin is not a salaried person. Uh, Brahmin is not a salaried person. Uh, even a Kshatriya is not a salaried person. Even a Vaishya is not really a salaried person. He has his own business. The, the Shudras, they're the ones who are maintained by others. So our, our Brahmin, Brahminical initiation, uh, really it means to be situated in Krishna consciousness, which is above the Brahminical uh, status. Sagunam Samiti Charitam Brahmabhuyaya Kokshya, the spiritual platform. Uh, otherwise, according to Varnashram, it's a fact. So one may consider that in terms of Varnashram, but finally the essence is what uh, the essence is to satisfy Krishna. Not simply to follow this regulation, that regulation. At the end of the life, we follow all the rules and regulations, and we're nowhere. Uh, but if we can satisfy Krishna, our life is successful. Okay? But then Prabhupada said 50% of his work is to Yeah, so we should, we want to do that also. We want to establish Varnashram. We want to live according to these principles. So that we want to do. But we don't want to lose sight of the real thing. There's so much to do to, to adjust our way of life according to the principles of Varnashram. And we should try for that. There's, there's a lot. But... Um, to go deeper into that in the time remaining is, well, you know, that's another hour, and, and a good hour to spend, but that's... Okay, there's another question here. Abhishek, is it okay to do japa, chanting on the beads, based on a fixed time, like two hours, without paying attention to counting? Or is counting 16 rounds a must, as Srila Prabhupada recommended. Sometimes just immer being, immersing oneself in chanting without bothering about counting is more pleasurable and satisfying, and generally two hours are more than enough to finish 16 rounds. And counting just feels like distraction and mechanical, but it is contrary to Prabhupada's advice of counting the rounds. Please suggest. Yeah, the idea is attractive. Just mark out two hours and, and figure that's pretty likely to be 16 rounds and immerse yourself. But if the spiritual master said, chant 16 rounds, you want to make sure you've covered that. So, if you really want to take that, that approach, I would say, all right, um, 
if you know that you can figure out that you can, you'll infallibly do 16 rounds in two hours, then give yourself two and a half to three, and then say, okay, I did my 16 rounds. You know, so that you know you really did them. But uh, that's rather an ad hoc uh, solution that I'm just coming up with, which really isn't my job. Um, Shri but said, chant 16 rounds. Even Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, we found that he was chanting on, we hear from Chaitanya Charitamrita that he was, he was counting on his fingers so many rounds. Haridas Thakur, who's the Nama Charja, and who certainly wasn't missing the point of becoming immersed and absorbed in chanting the holy name, counted. He had a vow to, of course, he was chanting so many. But uh, when these great souls were counting, then we can also count. We can also count. Those who are not initiated, they can do what they like. But those who are initiated by the spiritual master who fixes a certain number of rounds should chant those rounds. Uh, not that, well, wouldn't this also be good? Wouldn't that also be good? It might be good, but I have to follow what my spiritual master said. Uh, then Lakshmi Moni says, Srila Prabhupada did not suggest we chant 16 rounds. He asked us to vow to chant 16 rounds every day. He ordered us to chant at least 16 rounds. So those who are initiated have an obligation. Yes, exactly. It's not a suggestion. Um, Prabhupada didn't suggest four regular principles or 16 rounds. For everyone else, it's a suggestion. For those who've taken initiation, they vowed to do these things, to follow these principles. So there's no question of, but wouldn't it be better? Wouldn't it make more sense? Wouldn't, um, you know, if a cup of tea helps me be Krishna conscious, wouldn't it, you know, be better? No, you, you took a vow, that's it. End of story. No intoxicants, no gambling, no meat eating, no illicit sex, and 16 rounds. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Ram. Vow, that means must. I must do it. I promised. Yes? Um, so I should have read your book, Sanity Karma, but it's interesting and intriguing to see how you wrote about how, you know, similar the Bhagavad Gita is to the book of, I, I don't want to pronounce it, but Ecclesiastes. You haven't read my book, Vanity Karma, but you're intrigued with the idea that there's a similarity between Bhagavad Gita and Ecclesiastes. And does Ecclesiastes uh, lay out the, the laws of karma and so on? Yeah, it seems very similar. It feels very similar. There are, um, of course, the best way to answer that question for you would be to read the book. Um, OK, yes. Show and tell. Thank you so much. This is the book, Vanity Karma, and it's available on Amazon.com and other such outlets. And when you read the book, your questions will all be answered. But for a brief answer, the two books are similar in some ways and different in others. They deal with, they both deal with the apparent uh, despair that may come on when life seems meaningless. Srila Prabhupada points that out in the purport to uh, an early verse in the second chapter where, of Bhagavad Gita, where Arjun facing his, his relatives uh, in the, and friends at, on the battlefield. Um, Prabhupada said a person in, in that situation thinks, why am I here? Why, why are these perplexities uh, afflicting me like this. And he, 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 he thinks better to, to, to let them kill me even, to stand there unarmed and let them 
do me in. So it's, there's that similarity that we, we look at life and say it's, it's, it's meaningless, it's senseless. Um, so the, both that theme is much present in Bhagavad Gita and uh, especially in, in Ecclesiastes. But there are, the, the author of Ecclesiastes, as, as I point out in the introduction, the, uh, um, a, 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 a covered Hindu. You know, it's not that like underneath his, his Jewish exterior, there's really a, uh, you know, a Hindu sage who's saying the same thing that the Bhagavad Gita is saying. The, the Ecclesiastes sometimes says things that are close or, or the same, and sometimes says things that are completely different. So there, and the, the differences and the similarities both invite um, origin. So I've tried to bring the two books in, into dialogue, as it were, you know, bring them together and say, um, what are we saying here? Uh, where do we find differences that, or where do we find similarities that, that enlighten us? And where do we find differences that enlighten us? And how do we resolve those, those differences? Or, or what do we do with this question where, where things are presented so, so differently? I can say just as a as one point in the in the for the speaker of, of Kohelet or Ecclesiastes, um, there doesn't seem to be, well the law of karma is very much in his mind actually although he doesn't speak it that way, but he he expects that there ought to be some some law by which the the good get their rewards and the, the bad get their punishment, and he sees that it doesn't happen. That sometimes the bad come up on top and the, and the good people get trodden tr down. So that, you know, that perplexes him. Why does that happen? And he doesn't have a... So he, he thinks there ought to be a universal law of karma, but then he sees that the parent laws get violated. So there's, there's much to be... Um, added, I would say, from the Bhagavad Gita to the, the speaker's uh, understanding. Um, and there's much that we can prop, profit from what he does understand. There, the points that are similar are he expresses eloquently and deeply. So both, both aspects, uh, the similarities and the differences, are, are profitable for us to to look at. Okay. Um, now, two things are happening. Um, more hands are being raised, and we've reached 8.01, which is the official end of our online class. So what I'm going to do, with your all permission, um, and uh, yes, what I'm going to do by your permission is end our online class, and still on here physically. Uh, when I close the lid, I, I don't cease to exist. <laughs> and so I can answer some more questions. Okay, uh, so first let me good bid farewell to all of our uh, friends and colleagues and uh, devotees on Zoom. And then we'll carry on. Thank you all very much. Hare Krishna. And I'll just uh, duck right out. Thank you. Hare Krishna. I'm just going to uh, disappear and, and uh, from your view online. And thank you again. Hare Krishna. OK. Uh, 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 hold on a second. Hold on one second. We're just going to let everybody get settled a little bit so that I can hear you, among other things I need to do. Okay. I just mentioned about this. Oh, you have to speak up. That's the thing you have to do. Uh, the, she mentioned about the book here. 
Yes. 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 Yes.
and uh, about this or about that, maybe a little, you know, not quite nailed down, maybe some drugs in his mind or whatever. But when he would go on and on, some, then the devotees would say, you know, why don't you just chant Hare Krishna? Why don't you just chant Hare Krishna? And then he, so this boy was there for that uh, uh, installation ceremony. And he saw that Prabhupada is you know, angry at this devotee, angry at that devotee. And he's uh, you know, really strong. So he, he spoke up. He said to Srila Prabhupada, why don't you just chant Hare Krishna? <laughs> Shri Prabhupada put his hand in his feet and began to <laughs> Thank you for that question. Um, Hare Krishna Maharaj. <clears throat> my question is, uh, this is mainly for myself, that you know, in the beginning when one comes to Krishna consciousness and starts practicing, and serving and chanting, the taste, the enthusiasm, the motivation, and you know, just everything is so amazing you know, in the beginning days. But as and when the time passes, the services are increasing, the chanting is increasing, but the enthusiasm is not increasing. Um, so am I lacking something, or is this the part of the process? In the beginning, we're all enthusiastic, and then after some time, we think that, uh, well, we, it becomes harder. Yeah, the, I mean, in the beginning days, even I remember those days when I had only two rounds, but those two rounds, those two rounds were so great. And now, and now, oh, now, I, yeah, it's miserable. Yeah, we thought that, you know, after maybe a few weeks, a month or so, we'd become pure devotees. Exactly. <laughs> and now it's been six years, ten years, thirty years. Oh my goodness, what to do? So that's the development of devotion and love. You know, like marriage. You know, in the beginning, it's like, you know, everything's so great. <laughs> you know, then after, uh, well, those who are the, in that ashram can tell me whether it's uh, a week or two weeks or uh, 25 minutes or whatever it is. <laughs> and some of the shine wears off, and it's not all uh, bubbly uh, anymore. And there's all these this hard work, and there's uh, he wants this and she wants that, and uh, you know. But when we stick to the process, uh, then actual devotion appears. Uh, if the relationship is just about as long as I feel bubbly, I love you. That's not devotion. Real devotion means it may be uh, wonderful or it may be hard. Uh, it may be exactly what I always wanted and it may be exactly the opposite. But because I'm devoted, I stick to the relationship. And that's actually love. Love is not the, you know, all the, the, the wonderful emotions that, that you have, uh, you know, on, on your wedding day. That's, that's wonderful and exciting and, and all of that. But there has to be an ongoing dedication of the wife to the husband, of the husband to the wife. Then you say, yes, there's, there's love there. Materially speaking. So our process is like that. It's not just the sort of uh, 
uh, initial and, and superficial, in one sense, uh, excitement and, and, and charge. But there's ongoing dedication. And for those who, who are dedicated in that way, there will be experiences of, of wonderful things. Uh, especially the more deeply we go into that process, it will become more and more wonderful. The sages, Vayam tu nava trip yama uttama shloka victim. We never get tired of hearing about these wonderful topics. Swadu, swadu, but they're tasty in every moment. So, uh, as we come to the higher stages, it becomes so wonderful. Uh, the Goshanis, they were, they'd forget about eating, and, uh, about eating. Not that they took a vow, I won't eat. They forgot. They were so, uh, so mojito, they were so en enraptured by Krishna consciousness, they just forgot to eat. They forgot. So in the higher stages, these things will come. And even before we reach those stages, sometimes we'll experience wonderful, we'll go out and distribute books for some crazy amount of time or some crazy number of books, and we'll feel so much happiness. Or we'll get absorbed in the, in the RT or in the deity worship or in our service, and we'll feel like, I just wish this could, could always go on. Especially the, the Harinam. We can feel how I just wish that Bhakti Vinod Thakur says, I, I, I wish that Harinam will always go on like this. Uh, it's so wonderful. So we can experience that. And the more that we stay focused on these things, the more we will experience that. The, the more we leave aside uh, Facebook, uh, unnecessary engagements, and become focused in Krishna consciousness, the more it will feel wonderful. Otherwise, our attention and the unnecessary things hold us back from our natural position of feeling joyful all the time. So we need to purify our hearts. We need to put aside unnecessary necessities. We need to really get it, engage ourselves fully in Krishna's service. And the more we do that, the more we'll feel how, how wonderful. But even doing that, sometimes it's difficult. It's not that, you know, I'm reading Giriraj Maharaj's book about the Juhu project. So how the devotees were going through so much difficulty. You know, it didn't seem like fun at every moment. Uh, but out of dedication to the spiritual master, they were doing it. And when you look back on it, you said those were the most wonderful days of my life. At the time, you're thinking, why did I even come here? <laughs> what am I doing here? You know, I came from a good family, and a, we had a nice house, and now I'm living like this. But you look back, and you say, those were the most wonderful days of my life. Hmm? Even the, the days that seem difficult, that's another kind of ecstasy. Yes. Hare Krishna. Well, that, uh, one, one lecture I was hearing, Prabhupada said that uh, to, to the word Nirakar, Prabhupada said that uh, Krishna doesn't have any material form. Huh. Krishna has a spiritual form which is always constant, such as Anand. Huh. So my question is, uh, when Krishna comes in different, uh, for different purposes, like in the as a Ram's incarnation or as a Varaha Dev incarnation or as a Narsinga Dev incarnation, why do we appear different uh, in different incarnations, even though he's the same person and same form, such as Anand? Even though Krishna is the same person and the same form, such as Ananda, hey, Hare Krishna. <laughs> even though he's the same person and the same form, why does he appear in, in uh, or he's the same such as Ananda, why does he appear in all these different forms? Uh, one reason is for his enjoyment. These are all great adventures to appear as half, half lion and half man and fight with Hiranyakashipu and all of these things. Uh, Krishna enjoys it, to appear as a king, to appear as a sage. And another reason is 
to please his devotees. Uh, the devotees, yes, want to see him in a particular way, want to exchange loving dealings with him in a particular way, and so he does that. Paratranaya sadhimam vinashaya pradishkata. It's not that he, and this is Krishna's nature, he's full of variety. Not that he only appears in one way, he appears in so many ways. Even an ordinary person, you know, sometimes he appears in his suit and tie, sometimes he's bathing in the ocean, sometimes you know. Not that because you saw this, this picture in the New York Times wearing a suit and tie, he always has to wear a suit and tie. Is that okay? Yes. Thank you. I think I'm getting signals that we shouldn't go on too much longer. <laughs> uh, if I remember correctly, uh, two or three years ago when you came, you were translating some Upanishads. Came yeah, I'm still working. Actually, uh, yes, we have a Kato Upanishad project, mm -hmm. which is I'm working on with my grand disciple Vasudev Das in uh, the Bhakti Center in New York City. And we didn't really know when we started how much I would do, how much he would do, what the proportion would be. It's turning out he's doing most of the work, practically all of it. I just, uh, what's the word? The, the Yiddish word is kibitz. Um, <laughs> I just advise and, and try to encourage. And uh, it's, the work is moving forward. So, uh, uh, and it's turning out very nicely. I'm really happy with the uh, the commentary, which is the the essential contribution, because you can, you can get translations elsewhere. But I think the commentary, which draws on several commentaries by previous acharyas, is coming out really uh, so quite nicely. Like in, like in the like Edmund Bryan's Yoga Sutras. I, I couldn't hear you. Tell me. Is it a synthesis of several commentaries? Like is Edmund it a synthesis Bryan's? of several commentaries? Yes, it draws on. As Prabhupada drew on different commentators to write his purport, mm -hmm. so Vasudeva is drawing on uh, several prominent commenta commentators, uh, Ranga Ramanujan mm -hmm. and uh, others, the, the, the commentators in the Madhva line and the, the uh, Ramanuja Charja line. Uh, yes. The different sampradayas. Different sampradayas. And they're. they're uh, Good commentaries, you know. It's good, and it's good, and it's interesting to see how, the, you know, the Madhva commentators are always focused on this, or Madhva is always focused on this point of, uh, of of the difference between the Lord and the living entity, and, and uh, between the Lord and everything else. So that's always prominent in his commentary, and other other lines of thought come from the other. Other commentators, uh, sometimes they, they just say the same thing and sometimes they look at things from a different angle. So it's, it's enriching to see how these, these different Vaishnava commentators are, are seeing things. But yes, so that the project's going on. It's not, uh, it'll take a while more. It's not zip, zip, zipping, but it's, it's moving. So I'm, and I'm really happy to see the progress. Um, and I think Vasudev is, you know, I think he's, uh, well, a lot to say, but I'm very happy that he's, he's taken on the project and is uh, doing a very good job of it. So I'm his editor. That's, I've always been an editor. Does Pradumna, does he have a consultant? Pradumna's there at the Bhakti Center, so he may sometimes ask Pradumna uh, something. Yes, and he's he was a uh, student for some time also in Sanskrit, so he does have access to Purdue. Yes. Yeah, I was, I was in a class with him. Oh, such a such a jewel, Purdue man. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, I think that was our cue. <laughs> And here, can we have some more kirtan to end up the program? Yeah, like that, something. Don't want to just 
and with clashing plates. You should have something better than that. And then there's prasadam, right? We're not going to starve everyone. And if anyone has to leave early, they'll get prasadam. Thank you very much. Thank you. In fact, leave early. It's not, not early anymore. But you have to leave. Thank you. Thank you all for coming. Hare Krishna. Shri Prabhupada Ki Jai Samaveta Bhakta